The allure of carrying a pocketable camera, which is capable of producing consistent results in a variety of situations, is undeniable. From spur-of-the-moment portraits, to hulking landscapes, to unlikely one-off shots, the ability to capture moments anywhere is the greatest strong suit of these cameras. Finding one that's consistent, that doesn't cost an arm and a leg, can be quite difficult, however. While thrifting one from a charity shop is an ideal situation, holding your breath for that needle in the haystack moment might be deadly. Thus, I'm gonna walk you through several cheap 35mm point and shoot options that are affordable but still quality in today's market. First up is the Minox 35EL. The Minox 35EL is potentially the smallest, if not the smallest film camera in the world, thus making it a great point and shoot camera that can be brought truly anywhere. Despite its tiny size, it still offers a great amount of control with manual focus and aperture control. On top of that, the lens is a 2.8 35mm rendering sharp images for its tiny size. One drawback is the concern for the electronics frying on you, so make sure you're purchasing from a reputable retailer. While it doesn't have any focusing aids, for the quality, size, and cheap price point of $50, the Minox 35EL proves to be a worthy candidate. Up next is the Canon SureShot Supreme. This autofocus point and shoot from Canon is gaining lots of popularity in the last couple years for its affordability and sharp quick lens, a unique 38mm f2.8 lens which makes punchy images even in low light. Now despite its larger size comparable to the Minox, its adjustable ISO, bright viewfinder, flash and self timer give lots of options for a variety of different types of shots. Coming in around $40, the SureShot Supreme proves to be one of the most versatile cheap point and shoots today. Third on the list is the Pentax PC700. In the 90s and early 2000s, Pentax was pumping out tons of point and shoot cameras that were all excellent in their own rights, yet many people overlook them today. While you could probably swap this out with many other Pentax cameras from that time period, this weather resistant camera never breaks, takes great sharp photos, and costs little to nothing, still even in today's inflated market. While the lens isn't as great as many other cameras on this list, its unique weather resistance makes it truly a tank to take anywhere. From sandy beaches to alpine lakes in the mountains, this $40 camera truly is an affordable point and shoot capable of going anywhere. Up next are the Olympus Trip Cameras. This series of cameras are nearly identical in makeup and use. Massive viewfinder, automatic operation, unique 40mm lens, and similar body build. All these models create sharp images, and the highlighting feature is that 40mm lens, which, man, is, I'll tell you, quite unique. For only $65, you can get into a very unique focal length that is an extremely portable size and renders great results. Next is Nikon Light Touch Autofocus Zoom. What a mouthful. When it comes to point and shoots, many people lean into the fixed lens cameras as the lenses tend to be much sharper and honestly, overall just better. While I would agree with this notion for the most part, there are a handful of cameras, this and the Mew included, that still have worthwhile zoom models. Able to zoom from 35 mm to 70 mm, it's wide enough while still allowing you to close in and get tighter shots. The small form factor, sharp and retractable lens makes this another amazing camera. I really like the aesthetic of this one too, nice and minimal and quite small. Coming in at around $60, the Nikon Light Touch is currently a steal for the quality that you're getting. Up next is the Fujika Auto 7. This early autofocus camera released in 1981 and is a fully automatic camera. From autofocus, auto winder, auto loader, auto exposure, and automatic setting of the film speed, it truly is fully auto. The lens is a plastic 38mm f2.8, so it's nothing crazy, but gives a decently wide lens. It also comes in with a built-in flash, and desperately needs it for those indoor shots, as I hear from many other users that using this camera in low light or at night can be quite daunting. Coming in at only $50, the Fujika Auto 7 is a good camera to get your feet wet into point and shoot film. Up last and probably the best camera on this list is the original Olympus Infinity. Had to save probably the best for last, the Infinity is the precursor to the legendary Olympic Mew cameras. 
Released five years before the original Mew, the Infinity AF1 features a faster 35mm f2.8 lens, and while its autofocus system is older than the legendary Mew system, it's still undoubtedly great. These cameras shoot fast, work well, make extremely sharp photos that rival their newer counterparts, and best of all, are cheap and affordable so that anyone can get their hands on one. Coming in at around $80, it's a more expensive camera on the list, but it's worth every penny as, in my opinion, it's probably the best and most bang for your buck camera on the whole list. So that's going to wrap it up for all the cheap point shoots I have for this list. Let me know down in the comments below if I missed anything, and let me know down in the comments which point shoot camera you had started on. For me, I shot with an XA1 for a little bit, then I dove balls deep into a Contax T2, which I'm still shooting and enjoying to this day. Otherwise, I want to thank you guys so much for watching and your continued support on these videos. The channel has been growing exponentially over the last couple months, and that's all thanks to you guys. So on that note, if you're not subscribed, make sure to subscribe to stay tuned with me and all the content coming out in the coming weeks. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, stay shooting, and I'll talk to you later. Adios.